All right, let's click record and we're live. Hi, my name is Kwame. I'm a documentary filmmaker and a voiceover artist based in Accra, Ghana. And before I even get into today's video, please, please forgive me for the noise that you might be hearing in the background. Unfortunately for me, my studio is situated in a part of the house where the window is right across the main street, first of all. And across from that is also a welding shop, a metal thingy shop. So I, I can't stop them from working and I need to record this video. I need to share this information so that we can all learn much more about voiceover. So to, in today's video, we're going to talk about how to improve your reading of any voiceover script. And I'm not going to say I'm an expert and this video is not going to be very technical. Like I said in the previous video I did about voiceovers. However, I've done this for about eight years or a bit more than that. And so I've come to learn or I've come to pick up a few elements about scripts and how to read them. And that is what I want to share with you today on this video. So let's get to it. But before we get into that one, I also get asked a lot of times this particular question, how do I get to sound like you? And most often they mean the voice tone and they ask if I did something to my voice or I practice or did some kind of voice training to get to sound like this. And the answer is no. Um, my voice sounds like this because that's what puberty brought. I don't know. So in terms of sounding like a certain way, you don't have to make it your prime focus when you want to start uh, voiceovers. It's it's an advantage that you might sound a certain way. Sometimes it also is a disadvantage because it's not all voiceover scripts that you can do. But in reading a voiceover script, what you should be concentrating on is the technique, knowing the principles, knowing a few things that like I'm going to share today that help make you much more engaging. It helps you um, get into character when you don't have a lot of direction from your client and all these things that you need to note about scripts in general and how to read them and make it easier because it's a skill. It's like learning how to drive. It's like learning how to play the piano. It's like learning how to play or uh, practice a certain talent. You may have something small there, but you need to polish it. And polishing it means there are few rules that you need to remember and follow a few tips here and there that make it easier to understand or grasp the concept of recording voiceovers like this. So yes, let's get to it. I'm going to, in the course of the video or when I finish explaining these key elements to you, I'm going to demonstrate how they work as well for you to see what I mean by knowing these key elements of a script and how to tackle them. So if you are familiar with the concept of writing, uh, which voiceover scripts usually are, you're going to be presented with a lot or a variety of voiceover scripts, unless you are known specifically for some kind of voiceovers or a particular genre of voiceovers. You do maybe only audiobooks, maybe you do only movie trailers, maybe you do only commercial voiceovers, you don't do any explainer videos, no documentary narrations. If that's your thing, that's fine. However, even that, all these principles apply to some extent. So that is what you need to know before you commit to reading any voiceover script. So if, you are, if you're familiar with writing, you know a script has a beginning, it has a middle and an end. It's basic, a beginning, a middle and an end. And usually with voiceover scripts, usually with voiceover scripts, your beginning is where you either capture the attention of your listening audience or not. So it's a very, very important part of a voiceover script. And you will find in maybe commercial voiceovers that it might start with an exclamation or an excitement or something that will grab your attention or a statement or a phrase that will grab your attention before the rest follows. So if it's an exclamation, you can have something like, it's amazing, you know, or it can be a question, are you having trouble doing this? If it's something that you can relate to, then it piques your interest to want to listen further because it's something that might solve your problem or might bring you some kind of entertainment or might pass information that you need to hear. So that's the beginning, forgive me, that is the beginning usually of a voiceover script. That is where you need to capture the attention of your listener. Now, the middle part of 
voiceover script usually contain all the emotions, the things that get you to relate to what the person is saying and how it makes you feel. That's where the bulk of, I should say, the concept of the, the voiceover script is, where the emotions are, where you can easily relate, where it gets you also thinking. And then finally, the last part of the voiceover script is usually where there's a call to action. Uh, it can be a literal call to action or sometimes it piques your interest or makes you curious enough to want to do that call to action by yourself. So there, there's no one formula and this video is not a uh, how to script or how to break down or it is how to break down a script, but it's not how to mark a script. So there's no formula or way that a script might be written. It can be done anyway. It's a creative writing or creative copywriting. So if you know what your client wants, then you know what to do or how to communicate that with the listening audience. <clears throat> so the beginning, like I said, capture the attention in the first five seconds or three seconds. It, it depends on what phrase it is that they use to punch. Just capture the attention in the middle is where their emotions are. And then in the end is where they get you to act upon whatever they want you to act upon. And script contains words. And these words have been carefully chosen to make, or they've been strung together to make this script what it is. That is one thing you need to also remember. They have been carefully chosen. And words inside the script are most likely going to be very descriptive. Apologies again for the noise outside. <sighs> Let's go on. So most of the words there are also going to be descriptive, which means that you need to give life to those words per their meanings. So they are adjectives. So if it's something that is cool, it's something that is soft, it's something that is um, hot or scorching, you need to give the emotion in the tone of your voice to that particular word. It helps to carry that emotion to the person who is listening to it because most voiceovers depending on how they're used, might end up in audio format, might. Even if it doesn't end up in audio format and they're accompanying pictures, they still need to carry those emotions. <clears throat> and those emotions cannot be flat. You cannot have a neutral tone of how you're mentioning every single word you're seeing on the script. And those things really matter. So carry those emotions Pair the words that you're seeing in there. So if you're seeing an, an exciting thing in there, if it's something that brings a smile to your face as a person, if that's what you want your audience to feel, or that's what your clients want the audience to feel, you should smile when you get there. You should laugh or chuckle when you get to a certain place that requires that emotion to be um, evoked or communicated. You should be angry if that's what the thing is supposed to communicate. You should be curious. You should sound intrigued. If all those things are necessary to carry the script where it needs to go and you need to note them. Well, yeah, you need to consciously note them and it will happen over time. It doesn't happen immediately. You start, um, your voice over career or whatever you learn over time to see these words for what they are and commit that okay if i see freezing cold i know how to make people feel like it's cold if i see scalding hot i know how to make them feel like Oof, that should could that thing could <laughs> i can't believe i said that that thing could burn so that's what i'm trying to say and it also requires you to get into character because you're a professional, you're being hired to bring this particular script to life. It's not the same as talking, although some scripts require you to be as natural as when you will be talking. However, there's still some tips and tricks, some uh, principles like, you know, having the right inflections for these words to make sure that they sound different than the average person would speak, which makes it much more engaging. That is some of the things, or these are some of the things that you need to remember when you pick up a voice over script. And it's most likely going to apply to almost all voice over scripts, which we're going to see in um, the demonstration that I'm going to do 
right after this particular intro. So getting into character is also very, very essential. For example, I was watching this movie or I was watching this series on Netflix and um, the narrator of, I'm going to mention the name, is Sweet Tooth. And the narrator of that uh, series narrates this um, or narrates a story like um, a very observant neighbor who is sitting on the front porch uh, narrating the lives of his neighbors. It's very laid back. It's very natural. It's it's emotive. It, it, it evokes certain emotions as and when they should. But it's also very calming as well, like somebody who's telling you a story and it makes you want to see how his narration affects the characters. So these are some of the examples or some of the ways that voiceovers can be brought to life if you know these key principles that, for example, or not for example, that it starts with something that captures your attention. In the middle is where you keep the emotions, you sustain your audience attention and in the end is how you land it. So it's an arc, but you still need to sustain all these things by knowing some of these principles. So it's, I think it's better to actually demonstrate how this goes so that you can see how it works in different voiceover scripts. And I'm going to be taking my voiceover scripts from edgestudio.com. I'm going to copy a few samples from there and I'm going to try as much as possible to highlight some of these things that I'm talking about so that you can get a better understanding of these techniques when you pick up a voiceover script or when you're presented a voiceover script. So let's get to it. So yes, um, my first script is uh, a commercial script, which um, starts with, it's amazing. I'm first going to read it through and I'm going to show you which elements or why the elements work and things that you should note. So it's amazing. I never thought one cereal would make my whole family stay for breakfast. And then the brand is mentioned, honey bunches of oats. There's never been a cereal like it with big cornflakes and crunchy bunches of oats. Finally, a cereal my whole family loves. So you can see that it has a beginning, of course, a middle part. And finally, an end. It has a beginning, a middle part, and an end. Now, this one doesn't necessarily say you should buy honey bunches of oats, but it tugs at the emotions of having your whole family present for breakfast being the selling point. If that's something that's um, important to you, you might want for I mean, you might want to go and buy honey bunches of oats because it's that good that your whole family is going to love it and want to stay for breakfast. So that is the emotion it communicates, and that is the selling point of this particular um, script. It's a short one. It's amazing. That is much more like you know how you are, you, you capture the attention of the people who might be listening. And there are several ways that can be done. It can be, it's, it's amazing or it's amazing. But however you choose to do it, you have to make sure that your first phrase captures the attention of the people listening to you. So what is amazing? How do you just start? Like, it's amazing. It makes them curious. What's amazing? Tell us more. So that is essential. And amazing is supposed to sound amazing. First of all, it has an exclamation mark on it. And so you need to have that at the back of your mind that it's amazing or it's amazing. Know that. So depending on the direction that you're going to get from your client or the read that they need, it might either be a soft, it's amazing. You can still have it's an amazing, which is still soft and still sound amazing. It's amazing. I never thought one cereal would make my whole family stay for breakfast. Or it's amazing. I never thought one, like you can have that as well because it's a commercial and depending on what your clients want to communicate, you need to find out. But knowing that it's amazing needs to sound amazing is important. And here you're communicating the emotions in the middle part, you're communication, communicating the emotions they need to make that decision to want to buy honey bunches of oats. I never thought one cereal, one cereal or cereal brand would make 
my whole family stay for breakfast. It means it's something that they don't often do. And what cereal is that? Honey bunches of oats. In my previous video, I talked about how you should mention the brand name properly because it's what the people need to remember at the end of the day is what it's being sold. Honey bunches of oats. And now there's never been a cereal like it. This is a never situation. So you have to make it sound like one of a kind. There's never been a cereal like it, ever. So they need to feel that in your tone of voice and how you deliver as well. You can't say there's never been a cereal like it. Yeah, you don't even believe in it when you say it like that. So there's never been a cereal like it, ever. This is, this is amazing. It's surreal. That is what you need to communicate to the people, in my opinion. So with big cornflakes and crunchy bunches of oats, they're giving you variety. With big cornflakes and crunchy bunches of oats, finally, a cereal my whole family loves. So you do that soft landing for them to know that, ooh, I need to get me some of that honey bunches of oats for my family as well. So that is the first example of breaking down a uh, voice over script, but you could have a different direction and there could be different takes. That's the beauty of voiceovers that the direction can change. You can have the same thing said in so many different ways that can change how it will evoke certain emotions in different people listening. So yeah, that is the first one. And the second one is starting with a question. This is more of, you know, uh, a need. Is this something that is bothering you? So it's a problem solver. The first one is also a problem solver, but this one is a different approach for the problem solving. So are you having muscle aches? So they ask you the first question, muscle aches? Does it click that you have muscle aches? So you can't shout at this one. It's not an amazing thing. It's not a beautiful feeling to be having muscle aches. So remember that it's not the same emotion that is being communicated. This one is muscle aches. Nothing is proven more effective or long, longer lasting than Advil. For long lasting relief of muscle aches, count on Advil. So some of these words might not necessarily be adjectives, but they need to be resounded. Count on Advil. It's a call to action inside the script or in the middle of the script. Count. It's, it's, you need to count on Advil. Why? So the question is why? Then they answer the reason why you should count on Advil. In a recent clinical study, Advil was found to work better than any other or better than Tylenol. Or yeah, it's better than Tylenol, not any other. Better than Tylenol in relieving the pain of sore muscles the day after exercise. So this is a very specific thing for people experiencing muscle ache. And if you're somebody who works out a lot and you're going through all that pain, they're trying to tell you that Advil has been proven clinically to work better than Tylenol in relieving pain right after or the day after exercise. So it's no wonder that doctors, so this is much more, you know, reaffirming why you need Advil because it is finally advanced medicine for pain. So by the time you finish listening to this particular um, ad, you know your problem will be solved with Advil. So muscle aches, nothing is proven more effective or longer lasting than Advil because you need that to also sustain you and relieve your pain. For long lasting relief of muscle aches, count on Advil. It's what you need to do. Count on Advil. In a recent clinical study, Advil was found to work better than Tylenol in relieving the pain of salt. <clears throat> muscles the day after exercise. No wonder, no wonder doctors recommend Advil for muscle aches more than any other non-prescription brand. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. So this are some of the things you need to realize that is, uh, there's a call to action over here as in count on Advil. Why should you count on Advil? This is why you should count on Advil and reaffirming that even doctors say you should count on Advil. So Advil is your advanced medicine for pain because it's long lasting. And if you're having muscle aches, you need Advil. So this is a good script and it's a good script that can be brought to even better life if you know how to read your voiceover script. Now, this is an explainer video. Speaking of getting into character, this is an explainer video. This sounds more like this is in, in character, more like somebody who... Um, 
can relate to your pain or is a professional or is even somebody who does this same exercise as well and is trying to convince you that bro advil is what i take so getting into character is also very essential when you are reading a voiceover script getting into character here is more centered around trying to be the convincing person or voice to something that a lot of people make mistakes with. So you must be calm, you must be engaging, you must be approachable in your tone. You know, you must not be condescending unless <laughs> there's a part of the script that, you know, t requires you to be, which also would trigger those emotions in the person who may have made that mistake that is trying to be corrected in the ad. So the question is, would you like to buy a house? Is it something for you? Is it is this something you want to do? Would you like to buy a house? It's a question. If the person doesn't sound as enthusiastic in that question, you might lose interest in what the person has to say next. Would you like to would you like to buy a house? Would you like to buy a house? No. Would you like to buy a house? If it's something you've thought about, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's, it, it sounds like the person is actually talking to you. Maybe it's your first house. This is where the emotions are being picked up. Maybe it's your first house or even your second. And you just think that maybe, that is why it's been stressed here. Maybe you didn't think hard enough about the last one. Is that you? Does it ring a bell? Maybe it's your first house or even your second. And you just think that maybe you didn't think hard enough about the last one. Listen, I love real estate. So this is my, this turns from um, being curious and trying to pique your interest to now conversation. Listen, let me tell you something or let me talk to you. I love real estate. Me, the person recording this ad or talking to you right now. And in most cases, even a bad deal can work to your advantage in a very long run. So knowing that First of all, your voice over recording doesn't always have to be a certain way because not one size or not one style fits all is essential in reading. So what is it that they want from you? And if you put yourself in a listener's position, how would you be convinced to act on what is being read to you or what you're hearing? So these are some of the things that you should note. And the final one was um, one which is different. I used it in my previous video as my um, example for reading voiceovers. And I'm bringing it here again to also um, reinforce some of these um, principles for reading voiceovers that you should note. So this one was the introduction of a documentary, which means that by the time you're done with this, it should make you curious enough to want to finish the rest of the film or continue the narration from there. So it's an introduction. You're a presenter. Welcome to planet Earth. It's like, whoa. It's like, oh, thank you. Like, it's, it's, it's the voice you hear when you open the door. Welcome to planet Earth. It opens you up to, oh my God, okay, what's going to happen? So you need to make the people feel the warmth of that welcome as well. That's something you should note. So the first statement either grabs your attention or not. And this one should make the people want to listen to what is coming next. Welcome to planet Earth. A place of blue nitrogen skies, oceans of liquid water, cool forest. Now, this one has a lot of descriptive words. So cool forest and soft meadows, a world positively, positively has to have, you know, some kind of positivity to it, even in your face and how you sound. A world positively rippling with life. Let the people know it's positive. And then you come to the, uh, the scientific or the technical aspects of the thing. So from the cosmic perspective, it is for the moment unique. Unique has to be unique. Sound like, oh, it, st it stands alone. It is for the moment unique. So again, these words will come to you over time when you practice more and more. You listen to more voiceovers that, you know, tend to use these inflections and stress on these words 
with the emotion that they're supposed to communicate and it will come to you. I, I, I often say that voiceovers are 80% listening or learning voiceovers is 80% listening to other voice artists and picking these things. And when you add some of these techniques or when you have the knowledge of some of these techniques, you're going to realize that, oh, that's why he said it this way or that's why it was said that way. And for you as a listener, this is what it did for you and also made you want to listen further so yes i'm going to end today's video here i hope you picked up something if you have any questions and like i was saying i don't consider myself an expert i'm somebody who's done this for eight years and i'd love if somebody has a different approach to some of these things that i'm communicating and also learn from you out there if you have um, much more experience or if you had something you want to add to this to make it better for people who might be watching this video to learn more. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it, to give it a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I'm going to try as much as possible to record more of these videos to help um, beginner voiceover artists by sharing what I've picked up over the last few years so that we can all learn and better our craft so like this video subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the um, bell icon hit the bell icon so that you get notified when i post a new video and yes it's, it's, it's only 10 percent of the people who have subscribed to this channel who have clicked the bell icon so it's very important and uh thank you for watching i'll catch you in the next one peace